Hello, everybody. Welcome to World War One Podcast. Choose your fighter. I'm your host, Eddie B. Thank you guys for joining us. Joining me on this episode is the one and the only Mr. Josh Legu. Hello, how are you guys doing? Doing good. Yes, uh, Dylan and Larry wasn't able to join us for this episode, uh, but they are taking care of some things. So um, hopefully you guys will be entertained and enjoy this episode. Um, there's a lot happening <laughs> Uh, this week and coming months of November and December. I'm, when you talk about gangs among gangs, who there's just so much dropping. Uh, but we do got some good news for you guys that we're going to cover, but we're going to get into our first part of. Oh my gosh! Video games. Uh, Josh, what's been in your console? <laughs> what's been in your machine? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I didn't get too much played this week. I just uh, dabbled in a little more Hollow Knight again. Um, not for long, maybe like 35, 40 minutes. Uh-huh. Um, work was kind of a bummer this week, really. Kind of had a lot of work to do. But I did get some uh, I did get some classic games, kind of retro games in. I played a little bit of Malice for the original Xbox. Yes. And, yeah. And... Um, what else? I just kind of, I have, I opened up Dead Cells, did not put it in yet though, for the Switch. <sighs> I gotta get, I gotta get that going. Um, other than that, I really haven't done much. I didn't even, I didn't even get to play Dragalia Lost this week. <gasps> no! So, yeah, I know. I didn't even, I didn't even, I was so tired when I came home, you know, it's like being an adult. So, um, I just didn't feel like playing it. So I didn't play it at all. So that's, Pretty much all I did. And congratulations to uh, Nintendo. Uh, Dragilla Lost is their second most um, game that they really made a lot of money on. Like, they right. were, like very successful mobile games. So congrats to Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's good for them. I mean, I haven't spent any money on it. So <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are. But I haven't I haven't gotten there yet. So Yeah. I still haven't picked it up yet. I have too much air stuff to do, everybody. <laughs> so I kind of can't do the mobile games at this time. Like, uh, like handheld and consoles, I want as well. I focus on a lot. Um, but hopefully th- the game looks beautiful and I do want to download it and I do want to give it a try. Yeah, it's a really, you know, like I was telling Larry last week, it's really in depth. Um, I was not anticipating, uh, this kind of mobile experience mm-hmm. to be like a full, a full game. Yeah. And it really, it really is. It's really, it's fun too. So I enjoy it. I, I just haven't got to it this week. So hopefully maybe at the end of this week or in on the weekend, I'll be able to play a little bit. Yeah. A lot of so, people, a lot of people have been finishing it up, and, but a lot of people have been going back and like grinding and using different characters. Right. 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 Yeah, there's a lot of options for playing this game. I mean, um, they made it pretty much open ended to play, and I'm, I'm, you know, to get you to come back in and hopefully spend some more money, or yes. if you haven't, or if you haven't, to spend money. So it's, uh, but each character is really fun to play with. So I, I recommend it to anybody. At least give it a try. You know, you don't have to spend one one dime to get it to to start it. So why not? Yes. So. Well, is that all that, that that you've been playing? That's been in your machine. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that's all. It's not much. And like I said, I really hope I got I got a few more pickups. Like I, I found a couple more computer games that Ooh. are older, like '90s computer games. But Ooh, I haven't. Yes. I don't really have. Uh, I have to get. I either am going to build like a retro PC to play them, mm-hmm. or I'm going to figure out just play them on my machine. You know, I, I have to figure out how to you know run DOSBox and all that kind of stuff to get them to to run, but. Because a lot of these games just won't run on modern systems, you know the way the they're OS. Made. Yeah, the OS. Well, on the computer that I, I use normally, it's sixty-four bit uh-huh. OS. It just won't run anything from that era on there at all. And then, um, you know, sometimes it's just the processing speed is so fast that it, it won't. It won't even. You can't even get the game to start up because it wasn't made for this kind of kind of computers that we have today. Yes. You know, so you don't really think it's changed that much, but it really has. So, <laughs> and, and maybe that's probably why, like Steam and Good Old Games, has like bought, bought some of those old school old school games right. and got them to work. I think right. extra programming went into those, and I'm kind of shocked that a lot of people don't talk about that. Like games from the the PC games from the early years running on modern PCs. 
Right. I, I, I honestly think that a lot of the gamers today just don't realize, like, they either grew up with it and they just don't want to go back to it, mm-hmm. or they're not even aware it's out there. Because, yeah. you know, getting this older stuff to run or even just archiving this older stuff has been a challenge. Because, you know, a lot of this was on magnetic media. This is a lot of these I have are even before CDs. So yeah. I have to get, you know, I have to get a five and a quarter inch floppy or a three and a half inch Ooh. floppy disk drive, <laughs> put it in like a USB enclosure or something if I want it to run. And I mean, I've got them and they're in there and they, I can actually pull data off of them. I can get them to work. I just can't. Um, I so I'm, that's why I'm thinking about trying to find an old PC. I, I'm see so, if I can I was get so that ha- one that way. I'm so happy uh that part of the 90s and the 2000s where it had the hard little mini i guess they were floppy disks i don't know what the disks they were but they were the yeah. hard kind it was like full and you could write all the stuff that was on it right right uh, yeah the three and a half inch ones the smaller ones yes yes oh, yeah those are some life savers <laughs> <It's cool. laughs> i know Trust right me. yes because i used to hate the little plastic they look like they could bend and you sometimes just like you don't want to put your hand through the hole because you might mess it up and stuff and i was just like how does any of this work right right well i mean these were like you know back in the day when like the largest game ever made was like 10 megabytes you know yes even less than that like there were games that were just like a meg you know And, and people and we only had like 20 megabyte hard drives or so that was you know, the, these were, you know, sometimes it, it was pretty impressive, like how much of your gaming PC was actually dedicated to to old games, you know? And then CD came in and took over. It went from CD to digital and CD. It did. Now it's just pretty much dig- digital. I think there's still some CD games that they still sell. Like if you yeah. go to Target and stuff, you can still find some. A lot of those games, like I've noticed in the store, um, there might not even be a CD in there, but there's like a Steam code. Yeah. <laughs> so you buy the box, but you got a Steam code to download the game. So why don't you just buy it on Steam anyway? Which is weird because the box is like super big. You'd be like, are we still doing s- s- a big boxes? And you kind of have to look at the DVD ones because the right. disc is on the DVD. Just, the game is on the DVD. Just be like, okay, this at least still make that for some of the collectors. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. World of... World of Warcraft, they have one. Yes. They have, like, you know, a couple of them. But pretty much, yeah, it's pretty much just a digital only for if you want a game on the PC now. And digital, digital games on PC, they can never lose their license. Because if they do and you don't save it on your hard drive or it needs a server, you can't play that game again. So your money is literally gone. Right. I mean, they had that. They just had that, actually, with uh, Alan Wake on PC where... You know, they the, because of music in the game, the license yes. expired, and then they Microsoft was actually able to relicense it. Yes, and so now it's back on Steam to do, like uh, to download and to, or Windows Store to download. So if you want to actually, they said it's coming to console eventually again too. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, if you don't have these games and they just take, you know you know delicense them or whatever mm-hmm. and. You're done. Delist them. You're done. You can't. You can't download them again. Well, I have the physical copy of it. I don't wait. I actually have the 361. Right. Uh, so do I. Yeah. And uh, I got it used, and I didn't know if they was gonna raise the price or anything. I still only paid like about three dollars for it. <laughs> so okay. Like, yeah. I'll take that one. Uh, well, uh, the games that's been in my machines. Uh, so I started up Bioshock on PlayStation Four. Uh, one of my friends were, was doing a drawing, so I was just, he drew a big daddy. He's an amazing artist. And I was just like, oh, now I need to play Bioshock again. Uh, my plan is, I'm playing it on easy. Cause I beat it, like I said, I beat it originally on PS3, uh, on normal, and I got the very good ending. So, um, on this new play do on PS4, um, I'm doing it on easy because I I pretty much know the story and I did everything before, um, so I kind of want to be evil and take all the girls' uh, plasmas and make myself uh. powerful and get the evil ending. So, okay, um, that's my goal for this one. Um, other than that, uh, Switch played more Breath of the Wild. Got into about to get into like the first Guardian. Um, I was still collecting uh, stuff from the shrines and finding different things it playing that game 
again is so refreshing and relaxing is once again i'm putting two to three hours into this game just wandering around figuring out puzzles and uh kind of like realizing that there was stuff that i missed on my wii u version that i never encountered missing yeah missing that i just never encountered them but playing it on the switch version it's just like oh yeah this was in the game i just never encountered it like um i i just fought this a uh, little witch thing that does electricity and didn't realize that he turns the sky into rain into electricity. Right. So that forces you to put all your metal stuff away. Because if you have right. it, you get, you'll get get electrocuted. Right. Well, I, my plan was I threw bomb, the square bombs at him and blew him up so he fell down. When he fell down, he was down, and then when he got up, he couldn't float. So then I would go in and hit him with my guardian sword. And I kept dying and dying, and I started to realize, I'm just like, there are times when Breath of the Wild is straight a uh, Souls genre game. Right. And I'm just yeah. like, it, it's an easier Souls genre game if you know what you're doing, but um, it, it, it works in this universe. In a sense, yeah. it's like it's like it's a Souls game with the uh, Prince of Persia game that was like almost that one on one battles. Okay, uh, with that, like like the way you, it kind of was like an arena in a sense, and you know, you could see the full character, and you was kind of like uh, almost over the shoulder. It was just those one on one battles that you win. It kind of felt like that feels like that at times, and I was just like, ah, oh, this is so good. I got into a Guardian fight, and I remembered to do. My repel attack with the shield and it was being the guardian. I'm just like, ah, oh, this all bring back memories. Like everything is coming into play and I'm just enjoying that game. So, uh, I, my goal is to finish Breath of the Wild. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, I have it done by Thanksgiving. If not, I would continue to give my update process because I got to get back to where I got the master sword and then go to the last guardian, which was in the volcano. Uh, so that one I gotta really be prepared for. <laughs> so that one okay. should be very entertaining. So yeah, they're um, all pretty good. So yes, um, play more King of Fighters. Two thousand. I'm playing two thousand and one King of Fighters. Um, it plays better on the TV with the Pro Controller. Okay. So yeah, I I am enjoying that. Uh, I will be picking up some games for Switch. Um, uh, after this recording. Uh, by the time you guys hear it and then uh, be picking up Diablo 3 uh, Target has to buy two get one free on games so if they include Diablo 3 I'm going to be buying that one uh, my plan is to get Spider-Man, Diablo 3 um, and Mega Man 11 uh, but then I was just like man I need Street Fighter I need Street Fighter collection um, like I was at Target today just planning my games that I need to get and i know the ones that i need to get for ps ps4 and like soul caliber 6 i need to get on i'm thinking i'm gonna get it on ps4 um so i go fight against my friend uh in the uk uh and then everything i uh, like i pretty much have everything for ps4 and xbox one for the rest of the year besides battlefield 5 battlefield 5 and just cost uh four are the only two that i need to get um but everything else is like kind of switch uh, related, so I'll be getting that stuff. Um, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, King of Fighters 2001, I've been playing. Uh, all Switch and been enjoying that. Continue to get my tail kick because I, I and I have to look up the fighting moves for that game for the characters because I'm just like, well, when in doubt, <laughs> treat this like Street Fighter 2 who <laughs> and just use e- the characters right. that use or I use a uh, Hadouken motion or Hurricane Kick or Dragon Punch, those are the characters I'm going to be using. <laughs> so, um, last but not least, I uh, played Forza 4, Horizon 4 a little bit more on my Xbox One, progressing a little bit more in that game. Uh, picked up Red Dead Revolver 2, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, I should say. Okay. Now, I, um, uh, I'm in disagreement with the reviews. Okay, so what, what did you what did you pick it up for first? So you pick it up for Xbox? Or I picked it for, for Xbox. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Uh, Target had a special edition, so I got that one. I didn't get the ultimate edition. I was seeing that some people was, were people had uh, were showing. Um, 
I didn't get a chance to get it Thursday night because I had to work, so I had to get it Friday morning, which was fine. Um, That's fine. Yeah. And and I got the last copy of the game, so I was fine with that. Uh, the install took me like 45 to an hour uh, to do because I had to switch it the first disc in and then switch it out and put the second disc in. So it didn't really take long. Um Two discs, huh? yeah, because yeah. it was so big. It's, it's, it's so like big. 105 gigs or something like that, or yeah. Um, <sighs> how should I put this? I mean, can we just can we just say how how big that is? That's a large game. <laughs> I mean, two Blu-rays. Yes, it is large, but it's large for the wrong reasons. Okay. Is what. It's so large. your first impressions? I mean, how many? How much time have you put into it? I put about ten hours. In. I'm on okay. the second chapter because the first chapter takes place. It's like setting the story up and all the characters, and right, right, and right, stuff. Uh, chapter two is still setting you up with some tutorial stuff, and you learn some things, but you can go out and explore the world if you want to. Um, the problem with it is, is that. It's, it's too quiet. Like, you don't really get no music or sound effects. Uh, I mean, you get the sound effects of you riding a horse and him breathing and stuff. But you don't really kind of get any music to hold you over in the game. Um, due to the fact that when you're going through these long stretches where you get into the town or you're going on a mission and stuff some of the missions you'll get uh you'll get story content like they'll be talking and having uh, a talk but it's so empty that it, it it's it's very bothersome in a sense that you have this big gigantic beautiful world give it to that give it to rest it's a beautiful world but you have this gigantic world or map that you're on and it's pretty much hiding the long low times oh okay so like like okay so for example like if you're in the world and you're walking around mm -hmm. um there are these like there's load times or is it like when you go into a, a building or how do how do they mask this it's they they mask it as in i give you a mission okay to get to that mission you and that other person have to spend close to three minutes on horseback getting to the first part of that mission okay if you're going to do a side quest if they throw you halfway across the uh halfway across where that where the where you need to be at your destination, you're spending five to six minutes getting there. Okay. On top of the fact that you have to press buttons and hold buttons to go quick. You you oh, automatically okay. automatically okay. do not run, you automatically do not gallop fast. It is very very it is it's frustrating to a lot of people because you are uh, punished in a sense by running okay and you're meaning that st uh, your stamina and things of, of that nature starts going down and you have to walk to uh, you know slowly get it back up or you have to eat something so it, it becomes it, it becomes an not annoying, but it kind of sets the tone that you're going to encounter this for a 40, 50 plus hour game, depending on if you want to do sides or get through the whole story. Um, and that's and that's problematic in the fact that you really want to get you really want to get through a mission within 10, 12 minutes the most so you guys enjoy the world that you're in and missions due to the fact that it may take long and let's say no action is involved due to the fact that it might take long you might end up be spending 25 minutes on a single section of a mission okay and so can you can you like 
just do half a mission or can you save it or how does that work or do you, you have, have to, to do once the you whole, commit to it you, have you commit to, do, to it you com- you commit to it once you do that mission you are committed to it. um they will remove stuff off the map uh okay you know you can't you yeah. can't select like once you I gotcha. do, once you because what happens is, is that you'll meet a person and if you go to them and you like focus on them and you hit like a button It'll go into a cutscene and it'll show you what mission that you're about to do and then to set everything up. You get on your horse and with that person or with that crew and you guys go do that mission. Um, okay. But it takes a long time. That's why it's hard to, get, to, to yeah. get there. So it's hiding the loner times. Okay. And so it's, it's kind like, of frustrating. It's frustrating that way. It, it's, it's the, exactly. And it's just like, I understand that you know you got this vast land and you really want to explore but you really can't explore this game because it's kind of it looks beautiful but it's dead like okay. it, it like ooh it looks ooh the the green trees the sunlight and all of that well yeah that's great and stuff but i want to get through a mission so i could get through this game and it's hindering me, hindering my progress because <laughs> I have to travel there. And right, so right. I hear you. My horse is being punished, and me as a player are being punished. And then these fresh, some of the frustrating controls. You have to press start to get to the map. Okay. None of the All right. none of the buttons, or even pressing the analog controllers, are set to where you could just pull up the map. You literally have to pause the game to get to the map to see where you need to go or where what mission that you want to do. All right. So, okay. Yeah, it's, that's kind of frustrating. Okay. Your, your, your horses are sometimes buggy. The game is, is buggy. It has a lot of bugs. Um, my horse somehow got stuck in my camp. And... <laughs> If I try to get on it, it automatically takes me off because your horse can't go into the camp. It has to go into um, this uh, little uh, thing, little um, pole thing that you're supposed to, you know, hook up your horse. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Well, I tried to stop my horse, and I I pressed the correct buttons to stop it, and the horse kept going and got into the and got into uh, the place and got stuck. And it's because the game kind of auto saves, you right. really can't do much about it until until maybe uh, you quit the game and probably restart because I haven't started it back up. Um, but there, there, Rockstar has problems still, and I don't really think this is game of the year material. Really, I so you're really, just you're just not feeling it at all. I, I'm. I'm playing. I'm making progress through it, right? And there are some ups in there, but there are a lot of downs to it. Like the, the gunplay is better because it's it feels like uh, Max Payne three, and but right. a little bit more refined, which is great. Okay. Yeah, that's great. The, the, yeah, the, the, the that is that the gun battles and stuff are fine. I, I really like that. Um, so they get a, they get an A for that. I'm gonna give them an A plus because there's still some problems, but I I give them an A for that. And gladly they fixed the reticle um, that you got the dot, but you see a, like a kind of like a right circle around it. And that's what Grand Theft Auto Five needed because it gave you a dot, but but at times if you are in uh, anything that's white in the background, right? You couldn't you, you couldn't, couldn't see it. And yeah. that, and that's one of the problems that was in the first part of, of, uh, of Red Dead 2 is that they want you to go hunt this deer and they want you to use this, um, uh, effect where you could, you know, see, um, the, the footprints and stuff. Well, if you're trying to follow them, there's supposed to be like a yellow thing that's following it. You can't see the yellow thing because they have the light shining on it. And so you now don't know what you need to do. And when you go into your focus mode, you're walking slow. 
right. and they have a blue little kind of smoke thing that you have to follow. So it's very that part was very confusing. And pro- I made it through, of course, but it was very problematic to be like you need they need to fix the coloring on this. You need something. You need something that if you're going to have light reflect on the snow where you can't see where the trail is going, you need your tr- you need one of them to be a different color. You can keep the light if you need to do that to like shine off to make it realistic, but you need the footprints to be a deep red or something to right. allow the allow the player to know where to go because you're going to get lost. Okay. So, um, it, I don't think this game is revolutionary. Cause and they were just like, oh, it's gonna change the open world genre. It did. It doesn't. No. Right. It's, okay. I I've got it, and I've I've got it to the point where I actually said on Twitter um, that the game is turning to the Order eighteen eighty six. Wow. So it's that bad for you? Huh? It's that bad in movement and controls okay. because when you enter a building, you're walking slow. Right. Every time. Right. Every time you make any movement, you're walking slow. People in the West, or even in Grand Theft Auto, you don't even walk that slow. And it's like you're walking in a wedding trying to take your time to make it down the aisle. And it's just like, come on now. We need to, there needs to be a faster pace to this. And maybe they'll fix some of that stuff, or maybe maybe it's just... It's just they not going to change. They're not going to fix it because they put in so much time and effort into n- that. Not even, not even that. They put in so many systems that is that are attached to your movement. Right. That, right. Okay. That I understand that you know, if you're walking, you're running. It's helping you get more stamina and stuff. So they try to RPG a basic mechanic, and it's just like that's problematic because what like if I don't have the material to build my stamina, stamina back up it's going to be a problem for me trying to get through a five minute seven minute walk or whatever to get to somewhere if my horse die or something or get lost or or or, right. or okay. fall down a tree or or to some bug random bug happen and i can't do it get them out then i have to get i, I don't want to restart or um or anything i want to get to the destination and, and progress I'm going to have to run or walk through that whole thing. And it's very, very problematic. So, I... I, I So, you're 10 hours in, so... You, you kind of... You just You're, you're going to keep playing it, right? I'm going to keep playing it. Yeah, I'm going to give it to yeah. next week, because... And, and um, maybe, you're, maybe it'll change. Maybe you'll feel a little better about it. You'll get the, used to it. The, the, <laughs> prob- the problem is I'm already used to it. And okay. what I'm having... I'm having a problem that I'm pausing the game and going to YouTube to watch videos. Like it's yeah. not holding my it's not holding my interest um, okay. at times, and that might be completely me. But when I do play and I get into a good groove, I'm spending three to four hours with it. Personal okay. time with it. Yeah, because I mean, you play Zelda, and Zelda's kind of like that too. It's slow, but it's, it's slow. It's 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 slow, but Link's speed is way faster right. than no, Arthur's than Arthur's movement. Okay. Like, like he like Link is not walking just to be like, I'm going to take my time and walk like a robot. I'm okay. It think of it like this: the movement of Arthur's walk in this game equals to 15 frames per second. In the okay. 60 frames per second game. Right. So, yeah, that's slow. That's what it feels. Feel, it feels deliberately slow, probably, yes. to you as you're walking. Okay. Like, so. like, you should be walking faster than this. Right. Even a, even if you, you just walk, you're walking faster than that. So, right. Like, this shouldn't, this, this movement shouldn't happen in an open world game. Right. How the heck that you spend time on, this vast where all these techniques and, and stuff and coloring and uh, characters and game design and then you get to the controls and just jack it all up so um, 
I am doing a review for it, so you guys will be able to check that out on ngrradio.com. Um, that's why I'm giving it one more week. Um, I'm still going to yeah. continue to play after the review, but once I kind of get every everything, all the sense that this game has to offer, um, I'm going to put up the review and give it a final rating. But at this point in time, it is not game of the year material. I'm I'm sorry, everybody. The reviews, <laughs> the reviews, the reviews. The reviews have been other have been good, and um, I mean, I think they made something like seven hundred twenty five million dollars over yes. the weekend on sales. So I mean, yeah. a lot of people are playing it. So and we'll kind of, I think, we'll get more of a broad spectrum of pe- like what people like and what they don't pretty quickly. Well, this is the thing about it. Even though they got their sales, a lot of negative uh, comments are being made that made of the game, and it's due to the controls. And I do see that. I see that on Twitter a lot, too, that people were talking about that. So I was interested to see what your opinion on it was so far. So, yeah. So um, it's a rock star gang. Oh, another thing. And I've always mentioned this. Rockstar is terrible at pacing and writing. This the dialogue. Okay, it is whatever it is. But you keep for the first chapter, they keep mentioning the same thing over and over again, and it's just okay. like, why not just make that? Why not just make what you guys are talking about as a tutorial mission? They should have simplified the controls and then throw you into the game. Yeah, and to and, to and you just action. and you just learn it, and, right? You know, just I mean, just, the people that are playing this game, they're not. They're they're not new to playing games. They know how to play games. So right, but it's yeah. but because of what they did to it, it's just like uh, this writing is terrible. And Rockstar has always been terrible at writing. They really can't set. Grand Theft Auto Five is a terrible game all around in this writing and with this character development. Like I understand what they're trying to go for for a cinematic experience, but. Th- their cinematic experience is not even worth a uh, ticket at a two dollar two dollar and fifty cent movie show show at the dooms. <laughs> like this is this is worse than video uh, direct to video material. Like th- like this is a class project for third graders, and it's worse than it, but just worse. Like th- Rockstar is just bad at that, and they'll never. They'll I feel like they'll never get it right. So that <laughs> okay. is that is my imp- that is my opinion for right now. My impression of Red Dead Two. I I would say this: if if you own the Xbox One, if you own the PS Four, I say wait to see if Red Dead is gonna go for a Black Friday deal or if it's a, or if it's a used game. Um, yes, a lot of people bought it because it's a Rockstar game. I kind of prefer you to go go ahead and play God of War or Spider-Man for better narrative and graphics and games. And I'll look at uh, Hellblade and even DMC Devil May Cry. Um, Shoot, go play Forza Horizon 4 if you you (laughs) want a better looking game. I mean, the game, like I said, the game looks gorgeous. Right. But if you want something that's really, that's going to just make you feel the speed and make you stay in tune to it, Forza Horizon 4 is a great game. Like that literally, I, I took God of War off my game of the year list because of Forza Horizon 4. But after playing Red Dead, I'm happy to say that I'm putting God of War back. Okay. Red, Red Dead does not to be need to be on God of uh, needs to be game of the year. I don't even think it needs to win. And I know people are, are going to give it uh, its due. Uh, that's good. They're going to make that game of the year, but I think right. that's kind of unfair due to the fact that there are way better games out there, and there are stories of games that you can see more of that people are talking, and not so much Red Dead. But. Uh, those are the games that's been in our machines, everybody. Um, I'm going to get into the first part of the news. Um, which is kind of what's going to be our main topic, but I thought about something else because uh, another person um, kind of uh, had a question that I I might want to I want to cover. So uh, 
the PlayStation One Classics, the f- uh, official 20 games that have been announced. So what's coming out is going to be Battle Arena Toshinden, Cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Final Fantasy 7, Grand Theft Auto, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Metal Gear Solid, Mr. Driller, Outworld, Ace Odyssey, Raymond, Resident Evil Director's Cut, Revelations, Persona, Ridge Racer Type 4, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, Siphon Filter, Tekken 3, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, Twisted Metal, and Wild Arms. And the <laughs> internet has... It melted down. Oh, they <laughs> melted It's on down. fire, yo. Everything's burning right now. <laughs> so, uh, a lot of people are going to be passing on this. Uh, yeah. I think I'm going to get it as because okay. definitely with me being a, a uh, me being part of a network and multiple podcasts and stuff, I kind of want to play it and be able to talk to it with on, with other people who are PlayStation owners and really give it a review. Um, because if you look at the Super NES Mini Classics and the NES Classics, don't so due to some of the games and the collector's items. You know, they, they were kind of limited. And, you know, the Super NES, that's the only way that you could play the original version of your shit. Right. This list, though, uh, well, I would say this. It's a great list. It's a great list. Um, people who are into Persona 3 and 4 and even Persona 5, um, I think they need to play Persona Revelations. I played it a little bit, um, and I need to go back to it because I really want to finish that game. Um, as for everything else, I'm surprised that not a lot of Sony's first party games are on here. This is a lot of third party games, but what are yeah. your thoughts? Yeah. No, you're right. No, it, it is a lot. And there's a lot of, um, obscure games that I don't think a lot of people remember that much mm-hmm. or but there are some really good ones that people remember you know Final Fantasy 7 yes. you know you know Resident Evil Director's Cut okay I, I think a lot of the games for PlayStation that people really wanted a lot of them we got in like HD remasters or mm-hmm. you know so we might have already had them kind of so I think they were trying to they dug a little deep in some of these to get some I don't know if it's like a music issue, if there was like, you know, licensed music or what was it because, you know, PlayStation, most of their best games were the third party games. Yes. Um, in my opinion, I mean, there was, you know, Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver and all that kind of stuff. Tomb Raider, what, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, Bushido Blade, you know, those are all Square Enix games. Um, so ball. I mean, yeah, well, most of them were, you know, but the, like Eidos or Eidos. You know, Tomb Raider Legacy of Cain, but um, they did Final Fantasy VII, but you're like, okay, so we got that. So I don't know if people are going to, I mean, personally, I'm probably going to pass on it for to start. Yeah. Just I might want to see what people are saying about it once they get it. Um, I don't really know if I need this, these games again, you know? Well, it's it's weird that they would put Battle Arena Toshinda in, but now yeah. Like, when was the last time they did anything with that? Right, they made. I mean, only, I think they made two right games here. with it. But yeah. Like, where's uh, where's Battle War? Where's Wipeout? Where's Soul Edge before it became Soul Calibur? Um, right. Yeah, they got Rich Racer, but that's Rich Racer Type Four. Like everybody want to play the original Rich Racer, where the loader screen was like G- Galaga. Like, yeah, they no, no, play I, I hear like you. That. What happens? Some to- of this stuff is going to be. Some of this stuff doesn't age well either. And like th- this happened to me with Final Fantasy VII. If you go back to play that today, it's on the PS4. You can download it. You get right. trophies for it. And I mean, yeah, it's a great story. It's a great game. But the graphics don't really hold up as much. And I know they've even tweaked those I mean, for the PlayStation 4 a little mm-hmm. bit um, for HD and all that. But this is going to be interesting to see when this actually comes out, what people think of these games, you know, 25 years after it comes out, after it came out the first time. Because they were, you know, the polygonal games just don't, don't really hold up well, in my opinion. Yeah, like I wouldn't even put Resident Evil Director's Cut because you got Resident Evil Zero out. You got the Final Fantasy Collection 
is coming out for like the other three platforms. So why would you want to play seven? You could buy the updated version where you can make the game quicker and stuff. Like, okay. Right. Well, if they didn't put it, if they didn't put Final Fantasy seven in here, that would have been people would have been fine. I think so, but I still think people would have complained a lot. No, nobody's complaining about Final Fantasy. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when they get to play it on here. I think they're going to complain about it on the on the PlayStation Classic. Uh, At people, least I would. people have grown about Final Fantasy VII being on this list because uh, Sony Square Enix announced that collection, and the people are happy right. that that game is coming to Switch, and that's where most people are going to be playing it at. People right. already downloaded the game on iOS and Android and uh, the game on PS4 that's updated. They don't need to rehash Final Fantasy 7. Nobody's going to revisit this game. When why why you keep throwing Final Fantasy 7 out when people care people care about Cloud, but they care about him being a Smash. People want that remake that they promised. And look what right. happened to that. They don't want to play Final Fantasy 7. If they would have do Final Fantasy 8, then people will understand why that game is not in the collection and why it's on here. People will, people will be fine with that, Final Fantasy 8 being in this collection. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, you know, it's probably, a, it'd probably be, a, or even, you know, um, 9 even would probably be a good, you know, there's some really good Final Fantasy games mm-hmm. that they could, they could bring back out that they just don't, they just haven't been. I think, like, I, I don't okay. know why Final Fantasy Tactics isn't in there, to be honest with you. If you're going to put a Square game, Final Fantasy Tactics is probably a game that would hold up. Yes. And it's, it, it is one of the best games for the PlayStation. I would have taken Resident Evil Director's Cut and put Parasite Eve. Like, these are supposed to be games right. that are classics. Tenshu is a classic game. Um, Bloody War. Uh, like, the, In the Zone by Konami. That was a basketball game. Like... There's so much stuff that other companies and I don't, and EA is not even on here. There's no it, game from EA on this. That's got to be license. That's got to be licensing issues. Yes. There's probably music in those games if they were like sports games, which mm-hmm. they are, you know. And there's other issues with licensing of character names and actual real people and stuff like that. So I can see why they didn't put some of that out. And you know, if you want really, really want to, most people don't want to play sports game, older sports games anyway, um, unless they're like, you know, Tecmo Bowl or something that's but actually I think, classic. But, it's, but it would show what the PlayStation 1 era was at that. And these are some of the you have triple A, triple B with a lot of C stuff. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there is some really good games in here, yes. um, but I don't think that there's enough good games in there to really warrant the purchase of a hundred dollar, you know, a hundred dollar machine. Yeah, at least not for me. So I'll, I'll wait for a while. Yeah. So I plan on I plan on picking it up, uh, and you know, play, try to give everything. So I'm gonna check out the emulation. Hopefully, it holds up. Uh, but we're going to move on to the next one. Uh, Part B Barn introduces PlayStation Home Decor lineup. And uh, these stories are coming from Game Informer. Um, if you're looking for some PlayStation themed decor for your living room or gaming area, Part B Barn got, got you covered. The home furnishing store has unveiled a new lineup that is based on the PlayStation design. The five products range from a media console to a beanbag. Although pricey, each has an eye-catching dark tone and a modern aesthetic, which makes them look quite nice. Here's the full lineup, and they have a picture of you guys who would like to see that Sony tweeted out. So the gaming media console inspired is $1,099. Um, launch table is $399. Beanbag is $249. Icon wall light is $199. And acrylic cubby inspired, uh, by PlayStation is $69. Um, they do look good, uh, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you guys, <laughs> yeah. So if you guys want to check it out, you can look. And it's good that Sony is kind of um, trying to put these, you know, trying to bring out more of their PlayStation brand in different ways. So it's it's kind of good because you don't really see a lot of PlayStation furniture compared to like what Nintendo does. You got plushies, uh, outfits, T-shirts. Um, you got furniture, oh, yeah. and a lot of yeah. people even could custom make stuff and make it look like a Nintendo product. Uh, and Sony, don't, Sony and Microsoft really don't have stuff like that. 
No, I mean, Microsoft has a little more. They have a more. They have more stuff, but they don't have. Nintendo is the king of that stuff, yeah. and I know there's a lot of knockoff stuff for Nintendo too. So, right. and, um, you and, know, coming out of China and all that. So, and I would love to, to me personally, I would love to have some Microsoft T-shirts and a hoodie and some underwear and stuff like that. Well, they've got they've got a Microsoft store now with swag in it. You yeah. can actually go buy stuff. I haven't looked at it yet, but there's supposed to be certain things you can go buy. You know. Pins and pens and yeah, whatever you, you to, want. You have to search where you, you have to search for a Microsoft store, and one, the nearest one to me is like an hour away, and I'm just like, uh, I think I'll yeah. pass. I mean, yeah. if they have that same stuff on a Microsoft store that you can pre that you can order, they'll ship it to you. Then I will check there. Um, but I think they need to do more clothing because Phil Spencer at some at, at some recent E3s and stuff, he has been having some really cool Xbox clothing merchandise, and I'll be like. Yeah, I would love that. Nintendo, I want all of their merchandise, all their clothing from Red, Reggie's little Nintendo pen to uh, the Yoshi yard, like plushie and stuff. <laughs> Just like a lot of stuff that Nintendo do. Uh, even uh, what's his name from uh, Bill uh, from uh, Nintendo, uh, Bill something. Uh, I cannot think of his name. Y'all yeah, know I, I can't. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he translates for Miyamoto. Um, I would love to have some of his clothing too. You know, some of the clothing that they were uh, wearing the direct in E3, they don't sell, and you just like, I want to have this. <laughs> like, I would pay forty dollars to get that T-shirt. Sit. But yeah. but it's cool that they're uh, doing that. So um, if you want to go take a look, uh, you can go to. Uh, you could go to the website and check it out. So, uh, but moving on, uh, Red Dead Redemption Two makes breaking record of seven hundred twenty-five million uh, the uh, weekend of its release. Just like you said, uh, Josh, uh, to say the criti- critically acclaimed Red Dead Two, uh, Red Dead Redemption Two is a financial success is an understatement. The official word from Rockstar is the prequel ranked in over seven hundred twenty-five million dollars worldwide was the most pre-ordered full game ever on PlayStation Network. Garnered the biggest day one sales of a full game ever on PlayStation Network and had the biggest entertainment launch of 2018. The developer also couldn't resist mentioning Red Dead Redemption 2 was second only to Grand Theft Auto 5 and highest grossing launch ever. The previously released Rockstar title bought in $1 billion in its opening three days. Um, well, of course. Um, Red Dead Redemption 2 received a rare perfect score from Game Informer. Matt Burtz called it an open world wrestling World Wrestling for the Ages. We also compiled a spoiler free guide to help you get the most out of your adventure and to find the best horses in the game. If you guys want to check it out. Um, so yeah, all that 100 hour overtime and stuff has paid off. <laughs> uh, but you know, it, like I said, it's Rockstar and I expected them to sell a lot. Like, oh yeah, there, definitely. There's a lot of stuff that people ignore about Rockstar and they just buy whatever they release. Most of the time. Yeah, I mean, they don't release much. You know, I mean, their games are crafted. They're, and people, there are people that love that. You know, their they want games, to spend, you know, 200 hours in a game. Their so. games are passable to those who ignore uh, faulty design. Okay. I haven't played it, so, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm not there yet. Reason why I say that. And I'm not going to rehash it to this longer. Is that there are some games that do the same thing as grand, like Rockstar games, and they get called out for it. And that's you're, sometimes you're just saying the that score. Rockstar gets a pass. Rockstar if there's gets something a pass. wrong. Yeah, yes. they do a lot. Yep, they're like Nintendo. They can't do much wrong, you know. But it's, but you know what? At least Nintendo. Nintendo is trying to try some some different stuff. And yeah. the element that they introduce, whether it works for the game or not, they will be fine it for another game and it may fit that genre. Rockstar has not developed anything outside open world games. Yes, you could try to say Max Payne and you could try to say Manhunt. But how but what is Rockstar really known for with their games? It's their open world. Who really talk? Who's still talking about Manhunt? Who's still really talking about Max Payne? 
they talk about they talk about the mechanics that were used in this game in those games right being right. used in other games but don't nobody fully talk about those so rockstar gets a pass that way they have faulty design and people just ignore it but if it uh, let's say Stephen dogs 2 came out and it played like grant like grand theft auto 5 or red Dead redemption 2 Stephen dogs we got called out for that and it that would have been lowering their uh their review score just saying. okay all right so, um Moving on to the next story, um, Undertale creator releases mysterious title, uh, Delta, Delta Room. Um, Undertale creator Toby Fox has released a free new title called Delta Room, an anagram of the 2015 title that features some of his characters and has the curious beginning. Delta Room starts off with a survey program where you build an avatar, the process of which includes probing questions in an anonymous field. Um, you guys can, Get it for free on PC and for Mac if you want to, uh, and that's pretty much all all about it. He said that the game is still in progress, but he wants people to play it and I believe give feedback to help develop the game more. Cool. So a lot of people thought it was Undertale too, but um, I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't. I this is the first I've heard of this actually, so I'll have yep. to check it out. He tweeted out that uh come back twenty four hours uh for another for a new announcement. Um, okay. So and then that was kind of the announcement. I was just like, oh, okay, yeah. Um, a la- a, la- a last story before you know we probably get into Smash because uh the Smash by the time you guys hear this episode, um the Smash direct will have happened and then there's extra. Um, that's gonna be forty minutes and then. Um, extra stuff with Treehouse. Um, I don't want to get into that because I kind of want to see what they're going to release. So, right. um, and people have their theories and stuff. So, uh, we, I know that that was a big news story that that was announced, but I didn't put it in this one because everybody knows about it and I would rather wait to see what gets revealed. Uh, but our last story is, uh, report players who create inappropriate custom characters in Soul Calibur 6 now risk a, uh, full ban. Now, Soul Calibur 6 features a fairly robust created character mode. It also lets you take any character you create into the online competition, competitive modes, including ranked. You can see how that might cause issues from a mile away, but Bandai Neko looks to be on the case. According to a translate message on the official Soul Calibur 6 web, uh, Japanese website, players who make inappropriate characters now risk having their accounts banned from online play. The exact definition of inappropriate is somewhat vague. There are plenty of characters loaded with mundane objectives that, when put together, create obscene imagery, but also characters who obscure the entire screen, change the hitboxes of certain attacks, or take one character swap, uh, take one character swap it out for another in an attempt to confuse opponents and rank matches. We've reached out to Bandai Neko to clarify and we'll update this article should they be plied. Um, and if you guys want to see uh, the review and some of the uh, crazy characters, you can you might not be able to see. You guys can go to Game Informer with that. So, um, yeah. How about that? It's good. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not really. Um, I'm not really big into Smash, to be honest with you. Oh no, this is Soul Calibur. Oh, Soul Calibur. I'm sorry. I'm. I, um, I, I got my stories mixed up. I was reading about another story while you were talking. Um, no, uh, it's good. I mean, it's it's good that they're finally taking you know uh, people's. I mean, there's been a lot of people complaining about this kind of stuff online mm-hmm. too, and there's and they've been seeing it, and I'm glad that they're starting to take this kind of more seriously. You know, especially with their community, and to create more of a positive community around it, it's just it's just good for the game. It's good for everybody. I, I don't really see why this is a bad thing. I wonder what would happen if you did get banned, and then let's say you pay ten dollars to do your PSN switch name, like to change the name and stuff. So uh, you're saying that the name was banned, but not in you could rechange your name maybe and be in play again. Yeah. I like, don't know. Like, if you can make another account and change, like, right. stuff. I'm sure you could. But, you know, and, 
you know, there are people that do that. I mean, there's people that do that on Overwatch. They they get banned and they just make another account and come back and play. So I, I don't, you know, I mean, there's going to be, there's always going to be some of that, but Same I don't really is. know. Yeah, and I, I just don't really know if, um, you know, it's always worth it. Mm-hmm. You know, for some people, I mean, it, it costs them money every time they ban so you know somebody if they want to come back and play. So, I mean, my whole thing is just play by the rules and you'll be fine. Exactly. <laughs> Well, J- uh, Josh, do you have any stories that you want to cover? Did you read anything? Or no, no. Um, I think you've pretty much covered the big ones. You know, Red Dead Redemption Two, and uh, there's been there really hasn't been you know that much that caught my eye this week. Actually, pretty much just what we covered. Okay. Yeah. So, um, our last part of the show before we let you guys go and have a great weekend um, is that there's a podcast called Married to the Game. And they had yep. a poll. I, you know about it? Oh, I I've listened to them since uh, one of their first their first episodes. Okay. Did you hear their latest episode? No, I did not. Not yet. Okay. So they uh they they put up a poll saying are old retro games harder than modern games? And so I participated in the poll. I said yes. Um, if you guys want to listen to the podcast, go ahead and do it, uh, because I did reply. I sent, a, I sent out a reply, um, to it. And so I, I was thinking more about that, uh, and was kind of realizing what makes a game hard and what makes a game easy. And is, is it due to your skill or is it due to design? Okay, that's so, interesting. Yeah, I I I, feel, I put this question to you. Um, how do you feel about that, or what's your opinion, your viewpoint about that? You're you're saying like were games harder in the past, basically? Like no, it, was, are, are, does a vi- is a video game hard due to your because skill? of design? Yeah, d- due to your skill or due to your or due to design or are video games or is a video game easy due to skill or design? Um, it can actually be, I think, a little of both. I mean, you know, if you think about games in the past that they were hard, they were hard by design. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they were, you know, we were coming away from console like arcade games coming into consoles. People, people in arcades, you know, they were meant to be hard because you wanted to put a quarter. They wanted you to keep feeding quarters into the machine, so you had to, you know, you get another life or get more health or whatever. So you would keep playing. You would keep paying. Um, now when the consoles came around, they, the first games, you know, that came out were just those old, basically arcade games ported over. Mm -hmm. So, and those developers were developing the first console games. They were hard. Um, but you didn't have to pump quarters into them anymore. Also, we didn't get the kind of as many games as we get today. Yes. So, I mean, and they're not as, like, I remember, you know, NES, I might get like one or two games a year. And that was, and there was more games coming out, but that's what I personally would get. I'd have to save money or, you know, get it for my birthday or something. Mm -hmm. So, but today everything is, and today they want you to be engaged in the game, but I do believe that they do kind of hold your hand a little bit to kind of get you through it so that you don't just become bored with it and say, okay, I'm done. I'm going to go on to something else because there's, what is there a dozen games coming out this week that you know you want to play or yes. you you know you hear or two dozen games in the next month you always hear like when um you know Assassin's Creed came out everybody's like well let's get through this before Red Dead comes out and that was like two weeks yeah. so you don't hear one thing about Assassin's Creed now so <laughs> right you know and and the the thing about it for me is that uh, I agree with you that it kind of you know it kind of it is both um. Back in the NES days and even the Sega Master System days is that it depends on how your skill was. Even though the game was designed hard, you could beat a game within an hour, hour and a half. Right. But it actually depended on how good the controls were, how you were able to handle the controls. Because there are some games that are, the controls were slippery than ever. And they, they, you would press a button and the result, uh, the action would be slower than the button, your button press. 
so it wasn't like a one one like when you press a button an action happened um there was like a time difference for it right um but you could be like Mega Man of 45 minutes if you knew yeah. what to do I mean you could be you could be Castlevanians like 25 or 30 minutes yes if you just know the patterns and you know how to get through it you you can do it quickly right Ninja Gaiden is going to take about an hour because right they it is hard it is difficult and it is hard uh but if you know where the hit boxes are at you know where like you said recognizing the patterns and stuff if you could get through like a lot of the bosses definitely when you get to the last boss where you got i think it's it's two two versions that you have to fight uh Jaquo. um like if you could get through all of that and get through their hit detections and beat the you could pretty much beat the game without the game genie or anything like that oh yeah definitely so like you you were able to get through a lot of games i think once they introduced like memory cards and uh hard drives and external hard drives uh, a lot of games had to evolve so that they could make it easier, which resulted in that you weren't able to do a out 45 to an hour run on a game. Whether right. you was a speed runner or not, you're not able to get through a game that quick. Sometimes the cinematic experience can't, you can't cut, you can't, you know, skip through it. You have to watch the whole cutscene. Like you have to play a game nowadays a uh, multiple times to just even memorize. It. So oh and, yeah, definitely yeah. And you really don't have cheats anymore, uh, or you see anyone fighting cheats or anything for for games. If you really want to get through a modern game nowadays, uh, you could buy an upgrade. You could pay your way, literally do some of these games without doing oh, yeah. any kind yeah. of effort. Right. Right. And I mean in the more linear experience games, open world ones are a little different. Like mm -hmm. Red Dead is a little different just because, you know, it is so much to do. Right. But um I do think that it it is just so much games are a lot more complicated now. People demand it. You know, I mean we people are demanding these experiences. I don't even know if they're gonna you know, people if everybody is gonna play Red Dead two to the end. Are they going to sink sixty hours into the single player? You know, I, think, I don't really know. I think. I mean, some people I don't know. Are. I think. I think some people are because the way. I mean, some people always do, and there's yes. and they have metrics on this. I mean, they say that like it's less than fifty percent of people actually finish a game that they start. Yeah. So I mean, it, and it, I think it even is, might even be like thirty or forty percent. It might even be even lower than that in some games. And it, it kind of depends on if the definitely if the game is an online multiplayer only game, like Call of Duty right. Black Ops Four and right. Overwatch and stuff. Those games you can't really beat because there's so much replay value in it. Uh, but who knows if you're going to be able to get all the achievements and trophies in there in those games. You probably already have them. You probably are un unlocking some, but that stuff is going to take a long time. You know, if you're playing a game that's single player and stuff, um, you have to go through the story and make progression. You have to go through the linear story. That's the only way that you'll, uh, be able to get a lot, of, get a lot and see a lot of the game and stuff. Um, and it kind of depends on your skill. Like, it's, it's funny that if you're good at like playing Soul Calibur, but you can't play Bayonetta two, right? <laughs> you know th yeah. that you the same skill level that's there, but in memorization, combo heavy, th but the execution of both of those games are different. Where one is a one on one fire fighter, um, where the other one is a arena style action game, where you have to focus where well, you have to focus on your character and what they're doing where uh so caliber you just got to focus on what your opponent is doing be able to counter attack um and be able to put in the control um sequence that's going to give you a bigger combo and stuff right like Bay like Bayonetta, you could just button mash pretty much through the whole game if right. you are if you want to. Um, so Calibur, you need to learn the techniques that that game offers. So there there's there's 
there's common ground there uh, for one thing, but the systems and gameplay mechanics that are used in both those games are very different. No, you're, you're right. The goals game? of the games are different too. Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, it all really depends on what the the goal of the game is. If you want to play online for two hundred hours on Black Ops Four or whatever, you know that that's a very different goal than playing you know Red Dead Two single player. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I see why they put in the time on both of those games. Put in a lot of time. Obviously, Red Dead Two. It's like you know, epic the amounts of time that they put in, you know, 1,600 people working for seven years or something like that to make yes. this game. You know, I mean, it's crazy. And, I mean, you know, they may, they make a Call of Duty basically in three years because they have three different developers. They cycle in and out of them. So it's kind of, you know, it, it's still on the scale, though, of a nice, of a big AAA game. So they're, they're very different. So their design philosophies are different, and the goals of them are different. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't really know what else to say that you know the, that these games are are they're they are different than they used to be, yes. and that is because of design and it is because of goal the goal for the game. It is totally a different experience today, and and, and, pe- and people demand it. And for some people, uh, it it does depend on the developer itself. Like, right, you cannot play a treasure game like a Nintendo game. You would get your tail kicked. Those are two different kind of difficulties. Um, even though they're fun, both of those, both of those companies' games are fun. What they produce is very different. You try right. to play Mario Kart, or <laughs> let, let me rephrase that. You trying to play Super Mario Brothers Two versus you trying to play Mischief Man. That's two separate things, even right. though they are kind of almost the same thing in a way. Uh, Mischief Makers is a little bit harder than Super Mario Brothers Two. Right. I'm just saying. No. But, no. Yeah. It is. But developer, uh, but developer, but Treasure has a different design philosophy for their game, where Nintendo has a design ph- philosophy for their games. So sometimes it depends on what the developer are able to produce. And look, Treasure could deliver a platformer, a fighter, uh, a shoot 'em up or a shmup. They could, they could pretty much offer a lot of stuff if they wanted to, and it would kick your tail. Nintendo, they can kick your tail if you want it to. Kick. Meaning that yeah. if you want to get everything, they'll make you work for it. Where Treasure is, you need to learn our systems. And we're forcing you to learn our systems so you can work through this game. And if you can do that, then you can enjoy the fun. Other than right. that, our games are going to be challenging. And we're, we're not ashamed or afraid to say that our games are challenging. Learn it. This is what video games are. Get your skills up. No, you cannot buy nothing for this. One thing you can buy is the game itself. Get your skills up. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I, that was it for <laughs> but, me. Uh, everybody, we want to know what you guys think. Um, are games, you know, hard or difficult due to your skill or due to development design? Um, we want to know what you guys think. You can email the show at world101podcast at gmail.com. You also can find us at shoutengine.com, world one dial. World One po- uh, World One One Podcast. I believe we have a YouTube page also. So if you guys yes. want to check that out, uh, uh, I don't know the YouTube account yet. I don't know if it's World One One Podcast. It is World. It is World One. I believe it's World One One Podcast. Okay, so you guys can check episodes there um, at World One One Podcast. Um, Josh, where can we find you? Uh, best place to reach me is probably um, on Twitter at Lagru. That's L A G R E W. I would really love to hear from some people that listen and uh, see what they think about these, you know, this, especially this retro gaming question. If retro games are easier, harder than today and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff and why and why they feel that. That would be interesting to get into some conversations with some people. Yes. Um, also, I wanted to mention, too, that we're doing the Nintendo Video Game Book Club. Yes. And we're still this was like we're kind of winding down this month, which was uh, Super Mario RPG. And so we're going to be, you know, reaching out to the community. I know Larry has already uh, asked a couple questions to get some people that have played. And so we can get them. Um, we can do an episode and just talk to them and 
get them their opinions on the game. And um, we're already voting for next month and what we're going to be doing. And I believe we're doing a handheld. Yes. And it's going to be, I think it's 3DS, isn't it? Did we, did, did, that, did that go through? I, I don't know if it went think, through or not. Uh, yeah, that I don't know, but I know 3DS was in the game. I think it is 3, I think it is 3DS and, um, now they're voting on the game. Okay. I don't know if they actually chose the game yet. So it's, and it's a couple, it's like a Zelda title. There's a Zelda title. There's, uh, Samus Returns. And there's another one I just can't come to the top of my head right now. But just go over there, over there and check that out. Nintendo Video Game Book Club on Facebook. Yes. Um, you guys can find me on Twitter at that bridge code. You can also find me on ngrradio.com where I do content with uh, the crew over there. You can find shows like Arsenal X, our Xbox podcast. You can also find Nintendo Pop Block, Nurse Gone Platinum, uh, The B-Side, and our main uh, show, Nurse Gone Rogue. Um, also, we got shows like Pot and Play, um, Nindy Showcase, uh, Squad Goals, Royale with Cheese, Trophy Hunters, and a whole bunch of gaming of uh, content there. Also, you guys can read, uh, read my reviews and uh, personal blogs um, there at ngrradio.com. You can also find my podcast, Optional Opinion, on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, and other podcast apps. Uh, a new episode will be going up, so you guys can check that out. Um, I got like about 10, 11 more episodes to go before I get into my new season. Um, so hopefully you guys will be uh, cool to check it out if you guys want to hear my opinions and games. I actually uh, put on my uh, Twitter page at that retro code um, uh, who won Street Fighter 2 or Mortal Kombat. <laughs> and I kind of go over the history of Street Fighter 2 and uh, Mortal Kombat and kind of go over with the, the series and what they did for that time frame. So if you guys are interested in that, you guys can find um, all of that there. But uh, thank you guys once again. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. And we will see you next time on our World 1-1 podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye.